And this is uh, the last day of the Congress of the ASMO Vienna 2012 37 ASMO Congress. We are very glad that you are here because today we can reinforce uh, what have been the main messages throughout this Congress. And we will start with a summary of uh, results and clinical trials and uh, scientific data that we have been presented in three tumor types, <laughs> melanoma, no small cell lung cancer, and breast cancer. And the presenters are three young and very talented medical oncologists that have been working behind the scenes to have uh, the press program really uh, take place together with all the staff and together with Vanessa Pavinato that is in the room today. So we will start before uh, the presentation of the actual data with uh, the general conclusion about the Congress from our president, Martin Picard, that is the ESMO president and the president of the Congress. And so Martin will tell you our uh, conclusions about this Congress. Please, Martin. Well, we wanted, uh, of course, personal, personalized oncology to be uh, an important theme of this Congress. Um, there are two reasons for that. First of all, uh, this is the dream of every medical oncologist, to give the right treatment to the right patient at the right time, at the right dose, for the right duration. Um, but, and it is also true that personalized medicine has been put on the agenda of the EU, you know, for the Horizon 2020. Now, what we think as medical oncologists is that we are not yet in the era of personalized oncology, but rather in the era of stratified oncology. So we are able to identify in the tumor of patients some putative targets. We are seeing the development of an increasing number of drugs that affect the targets, but we are still a long way from understanding the complexity of all the pathways in the cancer cell, and we already know that cancer cells are incredibly clever, and when you try to block one of their important pathways, very often they are going just to find another pathway they can rely on to grow. So the story of personalized oncology is far more complex than we initially thought. And so the message in this Congress is that we have to intensify our efforts, our research collaborative efforts. There are very powerful technologies now that we can use, but if we don't do this work in collaboration, it will take a long, long time before we can really improve the management of our patients. So the important messages are, Yes, personalized oncology uh, is something we are working towards too, but the road is a difficult one and uh, collaborative efforts are really essential if we want to be there in 2020. That would be fantastic. I'm not so sure that we'll be there in 2020, but let's hope. Thank you, Martin. And now we will uh, start with Dr. Matthias Preusser, that is a medical oncologist from here, Vienna, in Austria, and uh, he will give us very important uh, results that have been presented in this conference on melanoma. Thank you very much. My name is Matthias Preusser. Thanks for the kind introduction. I'm a medical oncologist here at the Medical University and Comprehensive Cancer Center of Vienna. I'm very honored to be able to present to you very um, um, groundbreaking data which have been presented here at ESMO 2012 on, on metastatic melanoma. As you know, melanoma is a very dangerous disease with uh, tumor cells um, um, showing a high propensity to, to spread to other organs like the lung, like the bones, like the brain, like the liver, with a high risk of death in the metastatic setting. In 1840, it was stated that the only chance for benefit in this disease, in melanoma, depends upon early removal of the disease. And this statement has been true for almost one and a half centuries. And uh, even um, if I remember back a few years when I started medicine, as you can see, I'm a, I'm a young oncologist, I learned that uh, about 70% of patients with metastatic melanoma will die within the first year of diagnosis. And um, this has changed dramatically in the last few years. 
um, the kickoff was that BRAF mutations, a druggable alteration at the molecular level, in about half of the uh, about half of the of the melanomas. Uh, has have been identified and specific inhibitors against this uh, this aberrant protein you can see here on the right picture the brown signal this is the the, 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 the mutant aberrant protein in the tumor cells can be inhibited by specific drugs and uh, BRAF inhibitors have shown a significant increase in progression free and overall survival in metastatic melanoma uh, harboring this mutation. However, the success comes with two problems. First, the tumors, as Professor Picard has, has uh, pointed out, um, are clever enough to upregulate um, alternative mechanisms that drive the growth, in this case mostly MEK. And second, BRAF inhibition as a monotherapy leads to specific oncogenic um, uh, adverse effects. The patients develop uh, tumors on the skin as a, as a result of the therapy. So what Georgina Long and her colleagues, she's from Sydney, um, studied in this trial was to um, extend BRAF inhibition by adding a second drug, a MEK inhibitor called charmitinib, and to see whether we can improve efficacy and what the, the effect on, uh, on safety is. So in terms of efficacy, there was a significant effect. You see that three quarters of all patients uh, showed uh, shrinkage of the tumors with uh, a high rate of 10%, even showing complete responses, so all the tumors vanished. In terms of progression-free survival, there was a benefit uh, uh, compared to dabrafenib, so the BRF inhibitor alone, with a median progression-free survival of 5.8 5 months. Uh, this could be extended to 9.4 months with the, with the combination. It was interesting to see that by combining two biological agents, um, there was a, a, a tolerable and manageable toxicity profile with fever and, and gastrointestinal adverse effects being the most common ones. Very interesting also from a biological and also from a clinical point of view is that by combining BRAF and MEK inhibition, um, the investigators were able to significantly and dramatically decrease the incidence of the, of the tumors on the skin that, um, that are associated with BRAF inhibition. So the conclusions from these studies are that uh, the combination of the brafenib, the BRAF inhibitor, and charmitinib, the MEK inhibitor, improve progression-free survival and response rates, and uh, that the combination is safe. Um, we can say that uh, we can hope that this combination, BRAF and MEK, can become a, a, a standard of care soon, but we have to wait for the results of the ongoing phase three trials on this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we will have uh, questions at the end of all the presentation. Just one comment. This is one of the first successful examples of combining in a rational way two molecular target agents just to have a, a better inhibition of the molecular pathway that is relevant for cancer cells, in this case melanoma. Now, Dr.